Dad must have used that to haul away all those books from Doc's estate sale. Wonder if Biff finished the wax job on my 4x4. Hey, anyone home? There's something wrong with my key. Please, not now. Tomorrow. Give me another day. It's Marty, Dad. Open up. Marty? No, that's impossible. Marty was run out of town. I've got a bad feeling about this. Run out of town? What are you talking about, Dad? Let me in. This is a trick. Go away. Leave us alone? Haven't we suffered enough? Mom. Get Dave and Linda. They left town years ago, which you would know if you really were Marty. How can I convince you? Tell me something only Marty would know. Ah. Uh. The first time he kissed Mom, it was at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. That's right. Oh my lord, what are you waiting for, George? Let him in! Stupid locks. Marty! Oh my god, Dad. What, what happened to you? What do you think happened, butthead? Biff! I thought we told you to stay out of town, shrimp! Biff, whatever's going on, I'm sure we can handle it. Uh, reasonably. Who are they? <laughs> like you don't know Cliff and Riff. What do you think we should do with them, baby bro? What we should have done years ago, big bro. I'm gonna enjoy this, McFly. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm trying to process here. Where do these other tannins come from? From a mommy tannin and a daddy tannin. It's called the birds and the bugs, butthead. Ooh. I got a question. <laughs> Why are you guys so pissed at me? You don't remember? You've really lost it, McFly. Think back. The thing with the manure truck? Which one? Oof. Hey! And another thing. Ah. What are you guys doing here anyway? It's that time of the month. Time for Georgie to pay up. We usually take the payment in cash. But this month, we can take it out of your hide. Oof. Tell me. <laughs> How long have you been coming down on my dad like this? Ever since that school dance, when Georgie laid Biff out in the parking lot. <laughs> Shut up, it's not funny. Someone messes with the Tannen family, the Tannen family never lets him forget about it. <laughs> oh. Here's what I still don't understand. <laughs> what about my mom? I mean... How did she end up with my dad? Beats us. Guess she has a thing for losers. She could have had any one of us, but she went for old Gimpy McFly. Biff! You better leave before my dad calls the cops. The cops? We own the cops! The Tannen Gang's the fifth most dangerous crime family in California. We got connections all over the place. No way. You don't believe me? Man, no! Bang! Ha ha! Check it out. To your family from mine, in gratitude for your continued service, J.J. Valenti. It's Don Valenti, godfather of the Sacramento mob. The third most dangerous crime family in California.
Piece of cake. I never should have let that floozy talk me out of rubbing out your grandfather. Huh? Kid? No one in Hill Valley messes with the Tannen family! Marty, get in! This timeline's been compromised! No kidding! Somehow, something we did in 1931 allowed Kid Tan to escape his date with justice. As a consequence, the Tannins have been unchecked in Hill Valley for over 50 years. Ah, jeez. Grab the arcade. We've got to go back to the day Kid Tanner was supposed to be arrested. Figure out what went wrong and fix it. Otherwise, you could be forever stuck in a town owned by the Tannins. Not an option, Doc. Punch it. Okay, Doc. Let's run through this again. Sometime tonight, Kid Tannen is supposed to be betrayed by his mole, the singer named Pixie Trotter. That hot babe I saw coming out of the speakeasy. Exactly. When she does, history says Tannen will be arrested by a rookie cop by the name of Danny Parker. Parker? Parker? Hey, do you think he's related to Jennifer Parker? My girlfriend? Could be. Heavy. In any event, somehow we've changed history so that neither of these events happens. Condemning your family to generations of abuse at the hands of the Tannen crime family. You need to go back into Tannen's speakeasy, find out what's gone wrong, and get Kid Tannen arrested. No problem, Doc. Let me just put on my hat and I'm good to go. Is the mustache really necessary? It's essential! You can't let Kid know if you're the same troublemaker that foiled his attempt to kill me. Are you sure you can't come in with me? It's far too dangerous. You may be easy to disguise with your nondescript features, but ever since my daring escape from the police and the mob, my distinctive face has been plastered over every paper from here to Reno. Nondescript? I'll find a safe place to hunker down. That flop house ought to fit the bill. You can find me there if you need me. Pardon me, sir. From the way you're dressed and your general aura of seediness, I can infer only one thing. You're heading for Tannen's speakeasy, am I right? Uh, yeah. Can't you tell me the way? Down. Straight down. The last stop before the Inferno. Unfortunately, I don't have the power to stop you, but I beg you to tarry here a few more seconds and listen to my song. self-respect but you should care what in heaven's name oh sorry miss strickland just a little experimental prototype gone momentarily awry mr brown why is there a dog in that vehicle why well to advance the human condition of course hello harry harry mr callahan what are you doing in that getup I'm going undercover. How exciting! You'll have to give me an exclusive sometime. Right now, I've got some souls to save. And you'll have to get an eyeful of my newest experiment. You're not angry about the rocket drill? Huh. Water over the bridge. I've moved on to bigger and better things. Come by the gazebo when you get a chance. I'll be setting up. You won't believe what Einie and I have been up to. Famous last words. All right. Now where's that speakeasy?
Harry, you're just in time. So, uh, thanks for watching Einstein while I've been uh, away. It's been a pleasure. He's proven to be a surprisingly willing test subject. Almost as if he's been working with me for years. More like decades. What's the story with the little car and all this equipment? Einstein and I are conducting a few experiments with this one-quarter scale model to work out a few hitches in my planned demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo in a couple of months. A radio-controlled car? No. Well, yes, but that'll be so much more than that. It will amaze the world. Have you been, Emmett? I know I haven't seen you in a couple of months. I'm great, and I owe it all to you. Really? Yes. That argument I had with my father during our jet drill experiment gave me the incentive to finally quit that dreary court job. I've committed myself full-time to a life of science. Aha! Got it! Got what? I'll show you. Ready to go, Einstein? Watch this! When this baby hits 23 miles per hour, we're gonna see some serious cow flop. Einstein! No! Get him out of here! Not to worry. I've got a fail-safe eject mechanism around here someplace. See? Nothing to worry about. Nothing. Go see if I can find something to help, or someone. Majestic arms. Transients welcome. Well, they don't get more transient than me and Doc. Hey, Doc. How's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house. How are your investigations going? Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never had the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter, those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the Expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the Expo. Doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower, and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted and I'll handle the rest. Where'd you park the DeLorean? I hid it in the DeSoto lot. Nobody's buying cars these days, so it should be safe in there. I haven't really made any progress with Trixie yet. Well, get out there and make some. If she doesn't blow the whistle on Kid tonight, he may never be brought to justice. Hey, who did burn down Tannen's original speakeasy anyway? I still don't know. I'd really like to find out before we go home. I never did get a straight answer about why he came back to 1931 in the first place. 
It's, uh, personal. When this is over, I'll tell you all about it. I'm gonna hold you to that, you know. Why are Tannins always such jerks, anyway? Ah, uh, it's hard to say. Rogue, Neanderthal genes in their DNA, perhaps. Can you explain all this? I'm confused. It's very simple. In the original timeline, Timeline A, the speakeasy arsonist was never caught, creating one of Hill Valley's enduring historical mysteries. Okay. When I traveled back to 1931, I created Timeline B, in which I was misidentified as the arsonist and subsequently killed by Kit Tannen's goons. Einstein came with me, and somehow he ended up in the DeLorean when its failsafe mechanism triggered sending it back to 1986. Which is where I came in. Precisely. You traveled back to June 14, 1931, creating Timeline C, a world in which Carl Sagan wasn't rubbed out by Kit Tannen. But Arthur McFly was served for the subpoena. And shot by Kid Tannen's goons. Yes. So you jumped back in time six hours, creating Timeline D, saving your grandfather's life, but somehow preventing Kid Tannen from meeting his date with justice. Which is why the Tannens were so powerful when we jumped back to 86. Uh-huh. So now we've returned to August of 1931, creating Timeline E, in which, fingers crossed, we'll send Tannen to prison where he belongs. Got it? Sure. Good. One question. What? Can you explain all this? I'm confused. Damn, it's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted and I'll handle the rest. Just keep your head low, Doc. I'll be back soon. I'll keep an eye out for your grandfather. Who sent you? Ulysses S. Grant. What did you bring me? Meat and potatoes. What's the word? Words are for wimps. Ew. Cabbage crates. Must be for the soup. Who told you to come here? Could you repeat that? Who told you to come here? Joe Piscopo? Take a hike, squirt. Who gave you the right to knock on my door? Joe Piscopo? Who said you were worthy? Joe Piscopo? Who is the King of Siam? Hieronymus Bosch? 
Who is the king of Siam? Joe Piscopo. Who died and made you boss? Boss Hog? What will you do if I let you inside? Idle up to your boss? Where do you want to be tomorrow? Rome. Welcome to L Kids, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to once again present the hottest little number this side of the Rockies. And when I say my pleasure, I think you all know what I'm talking about, am I right? So let's have a big L-Kid welcome for the one, the only, Trixie Trotter.